So um, R6 is the thing what um, for people who are familiar with object or dated programming uh, looks uh, is more like it should be, or uh, like I think it should be. So the biggest part it's encapsulated. And so every method is inside this object. And all we need is the R6 library. And if we take a, ah yeah, I, I also have written here some example packages, packages which are using R6 and that's for example, dplyr, uh, test head, scales, shiny does also use R6. So actually there are lots, lots of packages using R6. So um, at the beginning we had the discussions, um, when you read the chapter and the first sentence, uh, the first few sentences of hardly are kind of, you don't should use it, but then he never explained why you don't, why you shouldn't use it. So it's, I don't know why he has written it actually. Um, and he, so hardly himself uses R6 a lot. And if you look at R6, what's exported, more or less, it's only that, only these three methods. Um, yeah. So not more as in the R6 package, you could say. And if you want to create a new uh, R6 class or R6 object, that's more or less everything you have to write. So you have only R6 class and throw it into your object. So you are, um, when you look at this object now, you see it's an object generator. So actually that's just a generator. We will uh, look at it, what that means. And you see uh, which methods are in there. So there's already a clone method. We'll, we'll talk later about it. Um, and there's an environment. So the whole thing, as I understand it, and it's probably like this, the whole thing is based on an environment. So that, that object is actually an environment in R. Uh, and, and when we now create, so that's the constructor. We also had the constructor with S3 when you remember. So when we create now, an, um, we want to create a real object, uh, we have to, Call with the dollar and new. So that's that's how you call the constructor. And so now my X is actually um, an R6, as we see here, with, with a, the only function or a method which is exported is the clone. And now where I said environment, if you write type of X, it says environment. And the whole environment thing is, um, I think the, the part which makes R6 uh, prone to errors or a little bit um, not as it should be. Uh, what, what do I mean with that? When um, we know um, R works like this, if I, if I write, um, that code, so X is one and Y is X. And now I change X, okay? And now I print X, I get two. And now I print Y, I get one, okay? So we made a copy here. If I, if I do that with an uh, environment, it's actually, different, it's, uh, I create a new environment X, um, I copy the environment in, in Epsilon. And now I, in the environment, um, I give it a variable um, of two. So variable test. And now if I um, run Y dollar test, I get also two, okay? Uh, 
I think that's the biggest concept you have to understand that the whole thing is an environment. And I forgot which chapter it was when we talked about environments, but there he also talks about that phenomenon that, that's working like this. And R6 is actually working like this. So, um, what's, what's it called? Uh, constructor. So I built a really simple example. You have to also give it the class name. And we will talk about what uh, public and that stuff means. So I extended the constructor a little bit, um, created a new R6 object. And now when I um, dollar $x, so when I now, a little bit better, when I access the public um, variable inside our R6, I get one. Now, when I say epsilon is X, epsilon of course also have the X variable. But if I change now X, X to let's say 10, um, normally dollar X, so epsilon has also 10, even though um, I, I did, here a copy and in the background, these two are connected. So people who are familiar with um, Python probably know this from lists. So there where the whole uh, clown thing comes into play. So you have, if you want to copy it and then edit it so that it's not connected, uh, you have to clone it. Okay. That was, a quick example about R6. Now back to the presentation. Um, yeah. So creating is with the R6 class. That's uh, what I made. And in this example, he creates a bank account. So we can use this. And have now an R6 class. Let's let's check what's all in there. So the first thing here, the bank account is the class name. We see a class name. And that's and um, the class name should be the same as your constructor name. So actually I write it like this, then it makes more sense. And the next up after the class name is the public. So this one, the first list is actually public. And in this public are uh, objects and variables and methods, which are exported by this uh, R6 class. And the first uh, function here is the deposit method inside the bank account. R6. Um, the deposit, so it's a bank account. We, we start with a, a balance of no, zero. Um, if you use the deposit method, you will add uh, the value you uh, put in here to your balance. And you see here the self parameter. So with the self parameter, that reflects uh, inside your class. So it, it want to use um, the balance, which is, so it references by self dollar. And you return self uh, because then we can use chaining. Then there's also a withdraw function, which uh, takes from the balance. Just, so we, like I said, we initiate it, now an X um, bank account dollar new. So now we have a, a new bank account on X. It has uh, a balance of zero 
and has the methods deposit and withdraw. To access these methods, you have to call dollar and then you can um, use deposit or withdraw. For example, we want to deposit uh, 10 and now look at X uh, balance is now 10. And because we are returning that invisible, our, our complete um, self, we can use chaining. What does this mean? We can use dollar deposit, deposit um, 10 and withdraw, withdraw um, 20. Uh, typing error. And when, now we look at the balance, we have 20 because we had 10 other than 10 removed um, 20. Shouldn't we have like more? Oh, I forgot it. So we can use chaining. The chaining you probably know from dplyr when you do the piping symbol. And here you can use it with the dollar symbol. You, for cleaner propose, you can write it uh, line by line. You would write it like something like this. Okay. So you can chain the usage and you can change it because, and that, that should you do, uh, you invisible return uh, your object. That's, that's why uh, piping works in this case. Okay. Yeah. Self, uh, let's, uh, yeah, that's what I talked about. You create um, an instant instance of a class with the new method. Uh, you can access fields with the dollar method. So you can access the balance. You can use a deposit and balance again. That's what I used in my example. And method chaining, which I also talked about. So you can, uh, method chain together. Uh, yeah, and that's that works because we are uh, invisible return our class object. Okay, and there are some special um, special methods. First one would be initialize, uh, and that's that does override the new method, okay? So we could simply add here a initialize and do something like uh, print hello world. If we now create our bank account, it says hello world. So the initialize is only called when you call the new method. So that's, that's if you want some logic for your constructor, you use, uh, you use the initialize uh, method. Okay, let's see what he is doing in his example. Okay, he, he creates a bank account uh, now with a password, which is null. And it they initialize. Um, so you have to give it a password. And in the initialize function, he sets the password. So self password. So he access the password in his environment is set to the password. And the deposit and the withdraw function let only uh, does only work if you give the correct password. Let's check how that works. So I simply copied from the presentation, create a new instance. So he already says to me, okay, password is missing. So my password, like in real life, everywhere I have the password one, two, three. Okay, now I have created um, an environment, let's look at it. Okay, I have a bank account again, and here is also my password, password one, two, three. So if you want now to withdraw something, 
it says uh, password is missing. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, does not work as a, uh, I have to do it like this. So password is not true. So I want to withdraw then and give me password and this is not true. And you want to free, it works. Looking at our environment, we now have a balance of minus 10 and our password is still here. So with initialize, you can do stuff like this. Hey, a quick question. Maybe it's yep. really stupid, but when you yep. called um, withdraw 10, 1, 2, 3, can you yep. explicitly say the XNPWD? Yeah, you, you, you mean like this? Yeah, it, it, that's doable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you should do it kind of. It's, it's the same with the first one. It should be X because that's like X. So, yeah. It's, it's doable and probably also good habit if you do it. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. The next, the next function is print. So, I simply copy this also in here. And the print function is the output in here, so in your console. And actually the print method or the print method, because R6 also can use um, S3, it will uh, catch, um, it will catch your bank account class. Because in the previous presentation, I showed you that, um, there's the, for example, print.date and stuff like this. And now there's a print.bank account. Because when we look at class of X, we see that it also have class of bank account and R6. So it actually connects to S3. So with the print method. So if we create it again, uh, Bank. Uh, let's have it here. So I added the print method. And now, if I want to print, um, if I now print X, so I withdraw it and print X, it gives me a nicer, cleaner output. And it, it gives balance minus $10 because in the print function, we uh, print balance and then with the scales package, we add a dollar and print simply our balance. Uh, that actually should also work if we, um, if we catch the whole comment in a um, bracket or how you say, um, parenthesis. So yeah, if I call the whole thing in a parenthesis, it prints the output. And because I invisible return uh, my object, it prints my balance. So that's quite neat. So the, the initialize and print function are of importance. And there's maybe the talk about it, there's like a destruct or a clean function. Let's see, okay. He talks about saving. Yeah, exactly. Okay, he doesn't talk about it. Um, I think that's important to know. I have to quickly look it up how it's called. Controlling. Important methods. I think it's called something with um, destruction or so. Can't remember. I will look it up and say to you, because you have to remove it kind of of your environment sometimes. And you remove it from your environment, there's an, an so the, the other way of initialize. So it's, I think destruct. Oh, can't find it. That's uh, finalize. Oh, finalize. Yeah. So that's that's what 
finalize is a little bit, um, you should be careful. Finalize. Lock object. Because um, you only should, it, should use it to remove um, stuff like um, a temporary file or if you have a bigger bigger calculation to remove some temporary stuff um, and don't remove any anything which is doesn't make sense so he, he talks about it but if you write your code in r6 you should um, use finalize to clean up any um, stuff floating around Okay. Da, da, da. That's what we talked about. Okay. Inheritance. So in object oriented programming, a big part is inheritance, which makes your code cleaner and less redundant and a um, lot yeah, cleaner. And this also works with R6, of course. So what you see here, what's new is, first of all, he creates a socialist bank account. And then here he talks about inherits bank account. So that line of code is how inheritance works in R6. And every method and uh, every variable which is in bank account will be inherited here. Okay. Um, he makes some new public functions uh, like check balance or a deposit. And in the deposit function, you see here a super deposit and then deposit and X and password. So what, what this does is um, the super, super method, uh, method does access the bank account method. And in the bank account method, we have the deposit function, our method. So he creates a new deposit. Inside here, he calls the old deposit function, and then he does something new. Uh, if, if you can remember in the S3 example, that was um, next method. So next method function is the same as in here. So he creates um, the new, new class of socialist bank account, so a new object. And here he talks about uh, supper. So it allows to refer to superclass methods and thereby delegate like with next method in S3. Yeah, exactly. And Deposit, okay, withdraw, he has a function here um, that he withdraw to each according to the need and common fund, okay. Let's have some special functions. Um, yeah, and if you now looks at the class of common fund, which is the new object, he sees now like socialist bank account, bank account R6. It's exactly the same as, as free. So you see here the inheritance line what's happening here. Yeah, but, but um, what we also saw is that um, the thing is like our password actually uh, is open and everyone can see it. So R isn't specialized in any of that stuff. So you can, you can hide it, but people can still break it. So it's it's not a safe thing to uh, save your password in here. You can hide it a little bit more if you use a private list. So here he creates um, a class of secure bank account. Let's recreate that. Let's set that and make a deposit. Okay, now we created a secure bank account. 
Uh, it has, again, a public list with balance uh, and an initialize of the password and the deposit. Um, and one difference you see here is that we don't uh, reference to password anymore with self. We reference now with private. So with private dollar password, we, we reference to the objects in the private list. And we see here a new list element that's private list, and here's our password. So the, the, the argument for us in I have to check what's going on. That's our list. That's private. Oh, okay. No. Mm. Let's see what we have done. I can't figure out why that's not working. Okay, let's remove that for a second. Okay, now it works. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, that's good enough for an example. Uh, so now I created a simple class of secure bank account. Um, I create a new object, okay. He wants a password from me, so I give it the password one, two, three. And now the difference is, last time when we looked at the X, we, oh, we still see the password, but we probably cannot access it. Uh, yeah, so that's what I said. It's, it's still not completely hidden because you can still, if there are still ways to find out your hidden password but you cannot access it anymore directly. And one big part is also you cannot change it like this because it's a uh, lock to the environment. So with balance, what we have here in public, I actually can do stuff like this. So now our balance is 100, but our password, I cannot change to then. So it doesn't allow me that. So it's a little bit more um, secured or better said, um, the part is it can only be accessed inside your uh, R6 class. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, there he also tries then to uh, access password and it, it returns null. And it talks about private. So you should use private and not self. Okay, and here's the copy part, which I talked about it. Uh, Hartley has an example here with, um, so that's, that's one of the reasons I think Hartley says it's not that good. And it's not that good because in R you don't think about that stuff. But if you do something like this um, in, the reference schematic was the problem with copy. So you get a full copy of the environment. And um, to work around this, okay, he did not talk how to work around this, but to work around, to create, for example, an, a copy of our X, we have to call um, and clone. So now uh, Epsilon has, has a new environment, actually. Does it say which environment? No. Oh, okay. So you have to use the clone um, method and the clone method even have like um, 
if you have nested attributes, you have to say D2. Um, again, if you're familiar with Python, or, or I think there's another programming language which I figure does the same, you also have to do this for lists. So in Python lists, you have the same problem and they have to use a deep copy. Otherwise it will be in the same environment. And the whole thing that can cause you a lot of head edge. So you cannot simply do this because that makes the whole, both of them to the same um, environment. Yeah. And, and, but this is also the power of uh, R6 with uh, it remembers in, in the environment, it, it, you can in, incre increment um, variables. Um, you can create, um, you can create like a card game. You can create all, all sort of stuff. And that's why it's used by so many packages actually because you can use it in, you can really uh, use it to your advantage. Uh, yeah, he, here he talks about another problem of R6. It's what you see here is, it, he creates a number R6 object and here a number pointer, which actually does use in the list number new. So, um, if it does that, let's test it out. Both will be connected and connected like you probably don't think of. So let's create both of this. And now I create an X number pointer dollar new, Y number pointer dollar dollar new. And now I do um, X. In, so first I look at Y, um, Y dollar value. Uh, can't, I can't even. Do, 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 do. It should actually work. Let's, uh, let's see if he does it. Number pointer. Oh, yeah. So I have to dollar, then I have to access the number environment and then increment. And if I now look at Y number value, it also has uh, the plus one in there. So both of them are connected because in the constructor, which is called here, we use this, it will use the same environment. So that you, you shouldn't use it like this. And that's what he talks in the slides about. And here he gives the same example. So X and Y has the same value. Yeah, avoid this by making sure objects are initialized within a method so you get a new instance every time. So, okay, now. He doesn't talk about it, so you should avoid this. Simple by uh, you initialize uh, to throw it in in the initialize. So you would create a number is null, and then uh, self number is number new and actually if i did write it correct that should work let's try it out yeah now it works so why number value does not have anymore um the increment value but if i look at x number value it has one yeah <clears throat> okay uh okay that's the last slide so um, I hope it wasn't too complicated because um, I did a lot of switching around. So any questions? I think it makes a lot of sense, but um, 
if you are not, not familiar with that whole um, object oriented data, it may be a little bit difficult. Yeah, like this chapter makes sense to me. When I took, you know, yeah. intro to Java or something, like this is the stuff you kind of you kind of pick up. Yeah, yeah. I and and I think that's that's keen. That's that what I always meant with the in the last chapter. The 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 methods like increment that don't float somewhere around magically. You all, always have to reference your your object, and then you have your method. It's like, but but Brad said he doesn't know about that stuff, so <laughs> he he more likes it the other way around. I think Brad said, yeah. So so he would like to write in increment dot number or something like this. But yeah, that's like. <laughs> I just want to increment my numbers. I don't need to know where the where they're from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which class is <laughs> Wait, is number even a number? Oh no. <laughs> but I, I think you probably can do a lot of cool stuff because I don't know how everything is connected with um with S3, but I would assume everything is actually connected with S3. So we could try it out. Um, let's think up of something. So we could create um, a sum function. Um, print hello world. Uh, okay. And now exist number new and sum dollar no sum x uh, doesn't work. I thought it works actually. Because with the print function like we saw it does work so print hello print that um, x hello print yeah print x hello print okay sadly it doesn't work it seems for everything or at least not for some i, I thought it will catch everything but probably not and that's probably a safe um, thing that it doesn't do it like this. And like I said, every, every um, a lot of packages using it. So Dplyr and um, Shiny, Shiny does use it, R6. So it's not uncommon to use the whole thing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, the dollar sign, but. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe print is really a special, um, I mean, we, we can look at the help. Yeah, that's what I was thinking initially with print. Yeah. Oh yeah, in the presentation, it, it did, didn't talk about it, but there you have also the active bindings. I think we we did talk about it in the environments chapter. So if you want to create a random function, you have to active bind it. So it's called every time. Um, the cloning behavior you can actually um, disable. Mm, the print method. Yeah, here he it talks about print in special. So whatever. Cloning objects. Yeah. 
lots of stuff going on. So it's quite cool, I think. And I hope I can use it somewhere. Yeah, here here's an active binding. So it's the active binding is actually another list. So you have the public list, then you have your active list, and then the active list you can write your your methods. It should evaluate every time you call it. So everything inside here, um, the active list will evaluate again a random number or uh, random uh, normal distribution. Yeah. So it's some great stuff, but yeah, I didn't use it myself, R6. So yeah. In uh, in R6, uh, I think the main advantage is you can access the state of something over time, right? That's my understanding. Yeah. yeah. Because you 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 don't have like you would have if you don't have R6, you would have to use um, an environment actually. You have to create some dummy environment which which where you throw in your stuff and save everything. Um, that's you you can use like a card game or stuff like this. I may have a good example. Let's see if I can grab that. Oh no. Ah yeah. And we that's probably a good thing to talk. So we, we know that's that's public stuff in the constructor, the first thing. And if you write a package or write really big um R6 classes, you don't want to write everything in here. What what you want to do is actually to simply do something like this, okay? So you create it somewhere and then you do something like number set and then you want to create a public and that should be a value. Uh, dollar. Value must be provided. Um, Yeah, okay. And now if I create um, an X of number uh, new, I have the value of 10. So the, the constructor number now or the environment number, if you look at it, it now has a public and here I have the value. So if you create bigger, uh, bigger R6 structures, you don't want to write everything in here you, you write um, all your methods. You can could write here functions like my function and then write here function, et cetera, et cetera. So you can write everything in here. And if you don't want, if you want to access, for example, the private, you simply change here to private. So that's how you create um, an R6 class um, in the clean way. And you probably should do it because when you when you create it like this, like we did, um, if it's a really big, it will be hundreds of thousands of lines of code. So you probably don't want that stuff. So we didn't talk about that, but you can do some really cool stuff with it, yeah. Can you store like anything in there? Like, let's say, like a value maybe you store like a data frame i don't know yeah you can it's a list so you it, it's an environment you can you can draw in everything in there so in the background it's simply an environment yeah yeah i'm gonna start using this actually uh, yeah i mean it has some like so i think the biggest thing is with the copy so um if you did do forget about it and, and i Personally, when I do something, I do often like uh, stuff like this, and then I do, um, and then I do something with uh, epsilon. And that's not possible anymore if you don't use the uh, 
copy thing. So that's that's a big thing you have to think about. Is that someone mitigated with uh, initialize and finalize? You create a new instance every time? Or no? Uh, no, it's not. So the initialize is um, only called um, if you if you write dollar new. So initialize. Um, if I do something like this, have um, uh, a value of 10. Okay, I have a simple constructor like this. Now I write X is number dollar new. It will call the uh, constructor, the initialize. And if I change the, or doesn't, doesn't matter. If I say Y is X, it doesn't call the initialize. And if I do now X, um, X dollar value, for example, is 100. And look at dollar value, uh, epsilon value, it will be also 100. Got it. Yeah. And you only can go around it if you do the um, clone. So you have to do it like this. And now if I write x value is 50, y value should still have 100. OK, it's not that bad, I guess. No, uh, no. Uh, <clears throat> so I would also love to use it. Still, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm do fun functional guy. So <laughs> my whole, my whole code is functional or function. It's like function hell. Um, and uh, I forgot that package, but there's, there's a really cool package um, targets. I don't know if anyone did hear about it or use it. Quite is a little bit agreeing. I've been meaning to learn it. I've just been yeah. using Make so far, and I'd rather learn something nice like targets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Snake Make. I've heard of it. I haven't used it. Yeah, Ma Mariella probably does know it. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Snake Make for pipelines. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So targets, the package targets, is actually um, very similar to it, but for R. So you can write pipelines for R with targets. And it will, it will remember, or it will only um, call the functions, your, your pipe elements, which, which have changed uh, if, if some data has changed. So it's really big. Hmm. Uh, it can then be integrated with within SnakeMake because I think now SnakeMake is kind of integrating everything, like also uh, pipe pipelines from uh, NF NF Core. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, you can with SnakeMake you can create everything because it it use uh, more or less the shell or it use yeah. Python, but. Yeah. It, it will simply check if you are, um, it will call your, your code pieces. It doesn't matter what language it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, cool. But, but you should check. So I, I think it looks really good the targets um, because it also gives you some, yeah, some nice, you can, you can graph your, your pipeline. I, I don't know if, if snake met, can that already, but it can visualize your your workflow. Mm. And and if you like here he, here he runs the uh, the pipeline, then he builds stuff, and then he shows you in the in the um, visually what's up to date, what's what's still to do, and stuff like this. And if you change something here, like um, here he edits the the function uh, of create plot. 
um, the network shows you, okay, create plot is outdated. So next time you run your code, it will not run everything of that. It will only run create plot mm. because everything else is still saved. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really similar to snake make for me. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I only know all the stuff because my girlfriend does um, bioconductor stuff and everything. And I have to fix her <laughs> server problems all the time. And yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so this does the snack, is it our package also the snack make? Snack make is uh, I think in Python actually. Hmm. It's you can. It's more or less you write it in, in I mean, Mariella can probably uh, talk more about it, but um, is there a simple example? In the, their tutorial, I think it's, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So you, you write more or less a config file where, where you say, um, what's the input, how it should output, what, what kind of command it should use. And, and you write everything, ah, you can also visualize it. So you, and, and Snake Make works with everything and it's, it's specially made for uh, cluster computing and stuff like this. So if you have a big workflow on a cluster with, if you call um, a Python library, you call a, I don't know, a C library or some bash script, you, you can even write a simple bash script and draw that in as a workflow step. So it's simply renaming and, and Snake Make connects everything up. So it's really great. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it, it comes from genetic stuff. So the main guys behind it did that all for genetic analysis, but I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, and, and I think the target now, um, people are using it a lot in R because like they, they are actively developing it um, in GitHub, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the only problem I always see is like you're feeling kind of you can't keep up <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yes <laughs> yeah I, I have to deliberately select what because i mean a lot of things so uh, something are somewhat enticing and you know really calling for your attention but <laughs> you need to yeah yeah i feel like it's getting better over time though <laughs> I feel like it's getting better over time, at least for me, you know, like I sometimes feel like I'm just kind of learning stuff in a vacuum, but then all of a sudden it'll all click <laughs> together to make something really easy that I wouldn't have been able to do a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, sure. And in one year you, but in one year, when you look again, what you did, you say like, wow, well, I did know nothing. It's like, <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's for me, my, so when I started programming, I, I have written an application, which is still in use. And, but I started programming with creating a big application. And uh, now it's a behemoth of bullshit, you know, like, it's like a mess. Only <laughs> I can fix it anymore. It's like code pieces. Every time when I change a little bit, it breaks everything. And it's on a server, so I, I killed a tons of times my server. And there I saw now, if I now could write it again, I would write it so much cleaner, but, but you, you only learn from experience. So it's yeah. Like a... yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the key principles, I mean, learning from the experience, uh, because yeah. you wouldn't know how, um, you don't know until you try doing it. And when you had a problem, you solve the problem, then you learn from it and move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so, 
questions from audience to the nine of questions. Okay. I, um, I, I am a big VS Code fan, so I write every of my stuff in VS Code. If everyone is curious, what that is. <laughs> you you prefer VS Code? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I only use VS Code because I use it for everything. Like, yeah. I, yeah, I, me too. Yeah, yeah. I started using Python and uh, it's like um yeah yeah but like um, i find it like somehow easier for me for the art stuff to work in our studio but i i'm not quite used to it still but um, i'm still running some r and switch to python with vs code yeah i mean the but the python so vs code and python is really great even the um the what's it called the, the notebook thing yeah it's yeah, really yeah. Good. yeah 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 they recently the, had the notebook yeah, so the R notebook isn't that good, I think. But I can I write everything. Like I, I write my university stuff. I write LaTeX stuff. I like I write everything in um in in VS Code, and that's the good part because I can write everything. Oh, yeah. So also <laughs> R Studio, you can write everything. Yeah, you could. <laughs> yeah. But but also the Git implementation or something. Oh yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, that's, it's amazing. That's really great. So I don't know if I have an old. Uh, yeah. So you see, when when I look here at the uh, code line, you see when when I have this pushed when this was changed with a comment or something. So that's that's for me. If you work with multiple people, that's really great. If you have color codes, it shows you the color code and stuff like this. Uh, I, I really like all that stuff. That's, yeah. Also, our studio is trying to integrate the VS code in our field benchmark. Is yeah, I, I hear it. What, yeah. what, 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 what does this mean? What, what, I don't know what's our studio workbench. Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's R Studio Pro, right? It's not um, normal uh, free R Studio. It's R Studio Pro uh, paid version um, that you can have the integration of VS Code together. And and what's R Studio Pro? Sorry, uh, they change the name. No, no. What's R Studio Pro? What 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 what's the difference? Oh, okay. They change the name from R Studio Pro to. Uh, R Studio Bench, something like that. It just changed the name, so it's used for like companies, not um. I mean, like the normal one R Studio we are using is used for people free, but the R Studio Pro is like they have cloud stuff. You know, you do the stuff on cloud. I don't know more functionality in it. Oh, okay, and and the thing that's then on a server, what right? that's not on yeah. my. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's like a server. server. Okay, so it's like a container. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and 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 you open it in the browser, or what? Or yeah, 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 in browser. And and you open in the browser for VS Code, then. It, yeah, I think if you open the uh, on browser, you can open the VS Code inside. I think the um, uh, R Studio Bench, whatsoever they call. I haven't tried okay. it yet, no. but okay. I tried the RStudio Pro before sometime. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think we had um, time. Uh, so I think uh, I need to hop on and uh, see you next week. Um, yeah. Who is there? Brett, you are, do you want to do the next week, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to attempt to do uh, um, R4. Okay. Wait, S4. Sorry. S yeah. S four. <laughs> All right. He's, he's very very uh, mnemonically named. Uh, um, oh, okay. Things are. Yeah. So okay. let's see if S three was ah, uh, um, <laughs> R four was yeah, uh, and let now we see what what's if the last one is the best one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See you all next week. Okay. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.